Um, and again, something um, that has been stated uh, several times before, but it is still valid, the general GMO attitude affects the applicable liability regime as any other legal rule. But in this particular area, um, it is particularly noteworthy that um, um, the political attitude has indeed shaped tort law dramatically more than in any other field. Um, the whole thing may further be complicated by the fact that parties may change requirements by contract. And as also has been said before, um, the legal threshold of 0 0.9 is in practice reduced to 0 0.1. Um, that is one change, but there may be also changes in the contracts affecting liability. So the thresholds, um, when to become liable, the question of when, who has to prove why or if he, she has suffered a loss, what the burden of proof is and so forth, that can be deviated from by contract. Um, and that makes uh, life a little bit more complicated. Now, <clears throat> these differences may cause headaches on the national level already, but of course they become more and more complicated if you look at the whole thing from an international dimension. Um, if you have neighboring countries, but also of course in the supply chain, if you have contracts between uh, several countries and jurisdictions. And even more so if it's beyond the European dimension, if it's a worldwide contract. Um, on the European level, there have been efforts to harmonize losses um, by the Product Liability Directive. I have gone into a little bit of detail with that in Buenos Aires. Um, I will not do that here, but um, the uh, Product Liability Directive was probably the one and only effort so far by the European communities to actually interfere into the law of delict of the member states. What were in fact the main issues that were raised there? One thing that came uh, up very much was the, the labeling threshold for uh, seeds, uh, for conventional and uh, organic seed lots. Uh, a lot of stakeholders uh, brought, uh, wanted to have that settled once and for all. There was also a lot of discussion about uh, the testing and the sampling and um, the need felt for further standardization uh, in that area um, yeah, and, and also uh, uh, it was felt that well, on, on, on the field side at the beginning of the chain doing things there uh, might be very labor intensive. Costs were also very pro predominant, uh, uh, predominantly discussed and quite some stakeholders uh, worry about that. One thing also uh, discussed and also mentioned already today here is about what does the, the, the wording uh, adventitious and technically unavoidable actually mean from a legal point of view for what the, uh, what the uh, level of uh, contamination one should aim for in building up coexistence measures. And that topic sparked a little bit of disagreement between different stakeholder groups. Also discussed was uh, the issue of the non-authorized uh, non uh, GM. And non-authorized GMs, you can have different ones. You can have ones that are not yet authorized in the European Union, but for instance uh, are uh, authorized in, uh, in the US or uh, other parts of the world. But you can also have uh, the uh, unauthorized ones that have, uh, have no authorization anywhere in the world. That's, that's also possible. And, and farmers and other people uh, worry about, okay, how are we going to deal with that in practice? Responsibilities and liabilities. Um, I think you can say that where the, the scale of the agriculture becomes smaller, uh, farmers worry more about the liability and, uh, and, and their responsibility. So it's a little bit scale dependent there. Practical coexistence measures were discussed. Um, and also going way beyond the mere isolation distances which are predominantly uh, discussed. But there's a, a lot of support for overall countries for 
having wanting to have the choice between GM and non-GM. Generally speaking, the methods, strategies, tools and models developed in CoExtra for coexistence and traceability of GM and non-GM supply chains will be used in the management of numerous other supply chains and of value-added or not niche markets, as well as of harmful products such as those containing allergens or organisms producing mycotoxins or pathogens.